the absolute best part of having forums on a site is that moment where you accidentally fat fingered the refresh key and all of a sudden you just lost all of your data. Now personally, I want to avoid that happening to the visitors of my site. So when somebody accidentally refreshes, I wanted them to get a message letting them know that their changes are unsaved so they avoid losing all that data. So let's see how we can make that happen using the before unload listener in React. Now, before we dive in, you should know I have a course coming up where we're going to build a full stack React application using AppRite. There's a ton of awesome concepts to unpack from authentication to database management. So make sure that you head over to spacejelly.dev slash React AppRite, where you can get updates straight to your inbox. So I'm going to start off inside of this new React application. And if you want to follow along, you can find the starter in the description of this video. And inside we have our basic form and we have some components that make up the inputs of that, which don't really matter for this particular instance. But ultimately what we wanna happen is if somebody has entered data inside of our form, we wanna make sure that they get warned before they leave or refresh the page. And to do that, we're gonna use the before unload event, which is triggered on the window. And we don't natively have that accessible inside of React, but we're still able to have access to that and invoke it to make sure that it gets triggered anytime somebody tries to actually leave. So generally when we're working with native JavaScript event listeners, what we're going to want to do is set that up inside of a use effect. So I'm going to import use effect from React. We're at the top of my component. I'm going to go ahead and start to use use effect. I'm going to set up an empty dependency array so that it just triggers once. But then inside of that use effect, I'm going to use window.addEventListener where the event that I'm going to want to listen to is before unload. Now there's two things that we want to add to this, where we want to first add our callback so that something actually fires anytime that happens, where we can simply pass in a function, but we want to be able to actually remove the event listener. So we're going to set up a separate function, but we're also going to pass in an options argument in the third slot where we want to set up capture to be true. Now we're setting capture because we want to make sure that everything is dispatched to that particular listener rather than anything beneath it inside of the tree. But now we want to set up that callback where I'm going to call it handle on before unload, where I'm going to then set up that new function where we can go ahead and first of all, get that first argument of event where we can also type that out using before unload event type, where what we're going to do is we want to take that event and we're going to simply going to prevent default to start. Where next, we're going to set the event return value to an empty string, but then we want to also return an empty string. So we can do that by simply returning an empty string, but a nice little shortcut that I learned from the MDN docs is we can simply wrap this in quote or parentheses. And what that's going to do is it's going to return that value of that empty string. But when we head back to the application and try to refresh the page, we should see that we start to get that message because we now have that event listener set up. Now, one thing to point out is MDN even mentions on their documentation page that this is a little bit inconsistent and might not always reliable, reliably fire, especially on mobile and there's some stuff going on with Firefox. So just keep that in mind, especially when with our first iteration here, where later we're going to dynamically set this, which will have a little bit more reliability and be better for performance in certain cases. But back to my use case, this is working pretty reliably anytime I refresh the page. But one thing we need to also make sure that we do is make sure that anytime the use effect runs its cleanup function, that we clean up this registered event. So we're going to actually return a function from our use effect hook, and we're going to run window.remove event listener if I spell that right, where we're basically going to pass in the exact same things as we did when adding it so that we can make sure that it's removing the right instance of that listener. Now, we shouldn't really notice anything by just adding this return statement. It's really going to help from a performance perspective, but it's also going to allow us to dynamically set up if this is actually listening or not based on whether there's something added inside of the form. So for instance, what I want to do is anytime somebody makes a change to the form, I want to make sure I update some kind of state to let the rest of the application know that there has been a change and I can perform something differently based on whether or not there is a change. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import use state, but then I'm going to also create a new instance and let's just simply call this has changed. I can then set my setter of set has changed. We're going to use the use state hook and I'm going to default that to false. Now down on my form, I'm going to set up a new on change handler, where I'm going to call that handle on change and below my use effect hook, I'm going to set up that new handle on change function where I'm going to simply set this set has changed value to true. 
Now, what I'm going to do is I want this use effect to run anytime this has changed value has actually changed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that in as a dependency. Now, what I also want to do is I don't want this use effect to actually run if there is no change. So I'm going to say if there is no has changed value, basically if the form hasn't changed, I'm going to simply return. So to kind of review what we're actually working with here, anytime this application runs the very first time, it's not going to have any changes. But once the form has changed, it's going to update this has changed value. This use effect will run a second time, and then it's going to set up our event listener so that we can actually make sure that whenever somebody refreshes or tries to navigate, they don't lose those changes. So let's go back to the application and try this out. So if I try to refresh the page, you, can, you can't really probably see this except for the icons up here, but nothing's actually happening. But now let's actually start to add some information. I'm just gonna add my name and I refresh the page and we can see that we now get that message of the changes may not be saved. Now, the way that we have this added is a really simple mechanism and it's working really well. And we could probably stop right there if you're happy with how that turned out. But what if somebody removes the value from the page and I now have an empty form again? Should we actually trigger that unsaved changes message again? Now, it's probably up to you to decide how you want the UX of your application to actually work. But from my perspective, I think it probably makes sense not to trigger that warning as they no longer have unsaved changes as part of that form. Now, there's probably a bunch of different ways for how we can actually handle this. But one way is we can actually start to inspect the data that's actually inside of this form. Now, if I go to my handle on change function, I probably don't want to list out every single different input, try to grab its value, check for every single one if it has any kind of values at all. So I want to do something a little bit more concise. So to start off, I want to grab the event from this handle on change event, and then I want to make sure I have it typed out. It's going to be form event, and I want to make sure that I import it from React. But then what I ultimately want to have access to is my event.current target, which that current target is going to be the form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a new instance of form data to wrap that current target or my form. And to make sure that this is happy, I'm going to use a type assertion and type this as an HTML form element. Now with that, I want to store that data inside of a new constant called data. And let's just console log that out to see what we get. And when we start to actually change the value, we can see that we get out this form data. But at this point, there's not going to be much to look at as you need to actually start to invoke the different methods in order to get the different kind of values from that form data. Now to test that out, we can see that the first input has a name of name for the event name. So let's just test what that looks like. So I'm going to run data.get name. And now when I start to enter that value, we can see that I get the value from that input. Now, ultimately what I want to do is I want to see all the values from that form and I want to do it programmatically so I don't have to look inside of every single different input. So the way that we can start to do that is we can get all the values from this data and we can map through that and check and see if any seem invalid or at least check and see if any are empty. So let's set up a new constant of values and I'm going to set that equal to data.values. But to actually loop through this, I'm going to wrap it with array.from to make it easier for me to work with with the map it, with the map method. Then I'm going to create a new constant of changed fields. And one way to do is I'm going to take my values. I'm going to run a the filter method and I'm going to say for each value, I'm going to actually check if that value has a length. So let's go ahead and log out my changed fields. Inside of my app, if I start to add my event name, we can see that I get it. But if I clear it out, it goes back to empty. But if I go to my location, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to pass that location value and my name value. And we can see that for each of those fields that I fill out, even my date field, it's going to give me that value. Now, there's a tricky thing here where we see that we have this file input. And if I actually select a file, we can see that it's not actually registering as a changed field, similar to how the other ones registered. When we run this values method, it's actually going to give us a type of file for that particular field. So what we can do is we can also say if the value has a size. So we're going to look for whether it has a length or if it has a size and ignore this type error for a second here. We can now see that if we select the file, we get that file inside of the changed fields, just like any of the other ones. But back to this type error, what we can actually do is we can wrap this value and say we want this value as a file so that we can read this size. And just to be clear, I'm not a TypeScript expert, but we can see that this is one way to solve it. And there might be other ways that we can read the data a little bit more efficiently, but this is working pretty well. And it gives us some solid results for being able to detect that change. Now, ultimately, we want to use this change fields value to dynamically set has changed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass that in, but I'm going to also chain on dot length so that we can see whether or not it actually has any items in it. And then I'm going to wrap it in a Boolean to make sure that I'm passing in true or false based on that value. 
But now when I open up the application, if I start to refresh the page, we can see that nothing's happening if I try to refresh. But as soon as I enter something inside of the form and try to refresh, we can see that I now get the message that I might have unsaved changes. Now, losing your data if you refresh the page might seem like a little thing, but it's an important part of building a better user experience for the people that are visiting your app. If you're ready to dig into a full stack React application, make sure you head over to spacejelly.dev slash React AppRite and sign up for updates for my upcoming course. If you want to learn how to make this form actually work, check out my video where I teach you how to upload files from a React application. What are you waiting for? Make sure you hit thumbs up, subscribe, and click the little notification bell for future web dev content. Thanks for watching.